You might have recently heard about AI agents and how they can help you do a lot of things. In this video, I'm going to share with you such an agent which is recently launched by Google and it does the job of a data scientist. Now, as someone who has spent 10 years working as a data scientist, I am pretty impressed by the performance of this AI agent. So in this video, I'll go over what was the task I asked it to analyze, how did it do on that task, and then do I think that this agent is at a stage that it can take my job? So let's first begin with looking at the task which I have given it to you. So this is Kaggle.com, which has a lot of data sources and data science competitions. And the data set which I wanted to feed this AI agent is this data set about Black Friday sales data. So this is an actual retail data set which was posted here and it has some records about the transactions which happened around Black Friday. And the purpose of this data set is to build a prediction model so that we could predict in future what kind of customer would be interested in buying what kind of product. So let's look at this data set. So when I look at the train CSV file here, it has a bunch of columns. The one is user ID, which is what was the person who bought uh, the product. The second one is product ID, what product did they buy? So the data is anonymized, so we don't know what kind of product actually is just a number. So we don't know who bought it, so there's no name of the user, it's just some IDs and same goes for the product. We don't know what was the actual product. Then there's a gender of the person who bought the product, the age of the person, what was their occupation. Again, it is encoded between zero to 20. So it's possible that 10 would mean software engineer, 11 would mean some management consultant, whatever. But we don't know what those numbers mean and they have just coded it into the 20 categories. Then there is a city category. So there are three city categories, A, B, and C. Again, we don't know what it means. It's possible that it is dependent on the size of the city. It's possible that A would mean bigger cities and B would be smaller and C would be suburban areas. The next Column is stay in the current city, how long they have been living there, it's a numeric number. Fourth is their marital status, if they're married or not. And then we have the last two, three columns, which are what is their product category one, which is the main category the product belongs to. And in some cases, they have secondary or even tertiary categories as well. So for example, if it's a sports apparel, then the main category could be apparel section, but it might have a secondary category of sports as well. So these are all the input features. And then the output feature, which we are trying to predict is that how much they're going to spend on that product. Now, as a data scientist, if I have to do this exercise, it will take me even as an experienced person, probably an hour or two, to do some analysis on top of it, to get the data, analyze it, have a prediction model, all of that ready. And let's see that how long does this AI agent takes to do all that analysis and the prediction on this data. Now to use this AI agent, I would come to Google Collab. It's a free platform owned by Google. By the way, Kaggle is also now owned by Google. So Kaggle is owned by Google. Google Collab is owned by Google. And this AI agent is what they have released in Google Collab. So when I come to collab.research.google.com, this is the page I see. And here I can create a note, new notebook. So a new notebook in Drive. When I click here, this is a blank notebook, just like any regular IPython notebook. And the good thing here is that it says analyze files with Gemini. So when I click here, the sidebar opens up and it is basically asking me, okay, what do you want to do? And I have to upload a data set there. So I have downloaded both the train set as well as the test set here. So let me just pick the train file and I'll put it here. And then it is asking for a prompt. So in the prompt section, I'm just copying pasting a prompt which I have previously written. This is the data from Black Friday sales. I want you to extract key insights from this data. Also clean up the data, fill null values intelligently, and then run a prediction model on purchase variable. Analyze the predictive model results to again draw key insights from it and then I have uploaded the data. And this is just all I the input I have to give it to it. And let's see what it does. So now it is in a thinking process. It is trying to look at the data as well as the prompt. And then it is trying to see that what kind of analysis it can do. So it says, okay, happy to help. Here's a little list of tasks I can execute. So there's data loading, data exploration, data cleaning, data wrangling, feature engineering, data splitting. So all the things which I would have to manually do, it is just thinking, okay, this is, these are the, all the steps. 
which I have to take model evaluation, data analysis, visualization, finish task. Want anything changed, feel free to send feedback and I will update the plan accordingly. So if I think there is anything missing, I can add it here. But I think this is looks like a very promising plan, especially if I do not have to lift a finger to do it and I don't have to look up the syntax for scikit-learn and matplotlib to do all the plotting, etc. If it could do all of these, this would be a very phenomenal thing. So let me say, okay, execute plan. And then, okay, uh, are you sure you want to continue, etc. Yes. So once I do it, then it is preparing to execute the plan. The good thing is that all you need to have is a Google account to be able to access this. And all the compute is at Google's end. So nothing is getting computed in your laptop which means it does not take resources from your laptop. And the data set and the compute which is available from Google side, it is pretty phenomenal. As you can see that it has started writing the code and thinking about different steps. So let's see what it's doing. So this is a task which I have given it to it. And then the first step here was data loading. And this is what it is doing. So it is loading the data through from the train.csv file which I provided it. It has a good amount of exception handling that there's an error if it doesn't show up. Uh, it was able to successfully load it and then show it here as well. As we can see, there's part of category one, two, three, and then there's a purchase thing. Then it is doing the reasoning. Now the data is loaded successfully. I will have to proceed to the next step, which is clean up the data, fill null values intelligently. And if you notice here, I have very subtly asked it to that pointed that there could be null values and it has to fill them intelligently, which means I don't want it to just fill with minus one or some other random value. Uh, it should do a little better than that. So let's see how it's doing. So in terms of category, uh, it's okay that he's it is doing it with zero because we don't know what the other category would be. It is checking for the null values. After data loading, now it is saying, okay, I have to do the data exploration for the original plan. So now it is looking at the different distribution of uh, different data points. It is generating some plots, which are pretty good. We can see the distribution of purchase amount. And from here, we can see that mostly people are spending under 10,000. And then there are fewer people as the, the value goes up. It is doing some other analysis for gender. We can see that male tend to spend more Okay, and there's some insights which we can get out of this. City C, category C, spend more. After that, there is this issue of data cleaning because there are some uh, problems with the data. And in the prompt, I had asked it to fill the null values intelligently. So there was a hint that it has to be a little clever in, when it's filling the values. So we can see that it is filling the values for prior category two and three. And instead of just filling it with one single value, it is picking the most frequent value in that column and filling it with that. So pretty good. Then it dropped the duplicates. How many columns still have null values? Okay, so now all of them have zero. Pretty good. Previous code block had warning about chained assignment. I will rewrite, okay. Yeah, so there were some warnings which were coming here because of uh, Panda's new versions do not support that kind of chained assignment. So it updated the code. Next, it is creating the feature engineering. And as you can see, it is creating combined product category. Okay, I don't think this was, uh, this would be a good feature, but anyway, then they have age product category. So it is basically creating a combination of different columns and creating variables out of that. It is doing one hot encoding, pretty good. And then label encoding as well. And then it knows that these are all the columns which would go into, so now it is dropping those columns which it had previously created label encoding for. Okay. So now it is doing train test split to uh, split the data between training set and test set. Very good. And here it is drawing two different models which are very good choices in terms of model selection. So that it is using random forest and gradient uh, XG boost. So it is trying with random forest here and then it is trying XG boost here, but then this error happened. It's reasoning of this error is very good that the previous code failed because there was a string value. So this is a string value indeed. And it should not have been there in the model input. It's saying, okay, I need to convert the string to numerical representation. Now, if I were to do it, 
myself, I would just drop this user ID and product ID features because it's not really needed and it's not getting the intent of it. But I could have told this to the agent when I was giving the prompt. I did it not. Anyway, so it tried to now label encode them, both of these, and then it got another error. Why contains previously unseen label, okay. And it reasoned about it pretty good that it has unseen labels in the test data set. So it did mm -hmm. label encoding on train set and then try to use the same label encoder, but it does not, ha it has not seen it. To fix this, the label encoder should be fitted on the combined training, that is true. So that's what it does. It again combined them and then did the um, transformation of label encoding. Now again, it got an error. Encoders require the input must be uniformly string or numbers. So got integer and string, so which means that our article for the reasoning, yeah? That the product ID and user ID contain both columns and integers, so it needs to transform them. So now it transformed them as strings, then it combined them, and then it did the label encoding. And now it was able to train both random forest and actually boost models. So that is good. Then it's doing the model evaluation. That's good. We can see that RMSC for XG boost is smaller, which means it is better, which was expected. It is doing feature engineering pretty good. So which means that marital and product category combination is giving the most importance. Then it has some more data analysis, a uh, lot of code, a lot of plots here, you can see. And then it is basically generating a summary of what it found that this XG boost is doing, uh, having a better performance, etc. And then, then there are some insights about targeting specific marketing, etc. So overall, very impressive. I think it still needs some hand holding. I should have told it that user ID and product ID it should not have used here. Some of the features which it created, I don't think they are like good features because as a human, I can know that what things together would mean anything. So it just randomly created a combination of different columns to create some new features. Also in terms of filling the null values, I think it would have done some more intelligent job because for product category, secondary or third, it should not just fill it with the most common product category. But overall, it did it on its own, a lot of plotting. Uh, again, I think some of the plots were irrelevant, but overall very impressive. If I know what kind of thing I wanted to do with the right prompts, I think it can do a wonderful job. Now coming to the question of, do I think this is at a stage that it can take my job or even a job of a very junior data scientist? Certainly no, because this thing which it has done, it is anyway five to 10% of what a data scientist spends his or her time on. Because most of the time is spent on understanding the what is the business problem. So a lot of discussion with stakeholders, that eats up a lot of time. Then a lot of time is spent in terms of seeing what are all the data sources? What do they mean? If there are any data dictionaries available? So getting to deeply understand the data, that takes up a lot of time. Then data cleaning, if it is just a syntax thing, this can do a phenomenal job there. But in a lot of practical cases, we have to like create features very intelligently. So a human input is definitely needed there. Same goes for filling any null values, et cetera. And then when it comes to the part of throwing it at a model, machine learning models to develop something, I think at that stage, this can really shine because with the right prompt, it can try 15, 20 different models. It can hyper parameter tune them if needed. And then based on that, it can give some insights. Again, when it comes to plotting those insights, I think it didn't do a very good job, but with the little bit of hand holding, it can definitely help. So in nutshell, I don't think it's at a stage or even would be at a stage actually take data scientist job because communication is something which is which will remain integral and it will be a limitation of any machine learning agent. But beyond that, it is a great assistant to any data scientist because then we can spend more time on communication or on data discovery or on doing things which only humans can do. And then when it comes to just the job of looking at the syntax and writing the code, this can do a lot of it, which is which is very good. So overall, a very impressive feat by Google. I'm very impressed and I think this is a great tool to use and everyone should try it, especially when you're trying to learn data science and build different portfolio projects. And I certainly don't think that it is at a stage or will get to a stage of getting our jobs, at least in the near future. So I don't worry about it, but this is how I think. Let me know what your thoughts on this is. And please post your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.